You know, the Toronto Maple Leafs took a chance in this player, and it didn't uh, pan out. Not to say it was a wasted draft pick, but they should have really looked at what this player wanted to do. He wanted to play in the WHA rather than the NHL, and uh, they lost him. Uh, they reclaimed him in the uh, 1979-80 merge, but Hartford took him back, and uh, what a campaign he had. Big 33 goals that first season. <clears throat> helped get Hartford in the playoffs and was one of the, the best technically rookie players of that season. So today we're talking about the pride of Flin Flon uh, Manitoba, member of the Manitoba uh, Hall of Fame uh, for uh, for hockey. And uh, the, the idea about getting into Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame, not everybody makes it, but this guy deserved it. It's Jordy Douglas. Now, six feet, 200 pounds. A nice power forward, played left wing and center. Born in Winnipeg, and again, first came to major prominence with Kern Hill of the Alberta Junior B League in 1975 when he had 51 points in 48 games. He moved to the big club, uh, Flin Flon of the WCHL, and became MVP of the squad in 78. In 76, he had 34 points in 72 contests. 77, the second campaign, big 63 points and 40 goals in 59 games. But 78, the MVP honors were well-deserved. 60 goals, 56 and 6, 56 assists for 116 points and 131 minutes in penalties. Now, he, his first NHL game was against uh, Minnesota, where uh, number 11, again, scored 33 goals in that big campaign. Um, basically, had to retire after the 82 season for uh, numerous reasons that uh, we've uh, kind of looked at. I think injuries caught up with him, and he basically had lost his... Uh, his uh, overall impact uh, for the game. Now, uh, in 79, his first season of Whalers after being 80, uh, drafted 81st overall by Toronto, he spent it uh, between the Springfield Indians of the AHL, who were uh, a Whalers affiliate, 16 points in 26 contests, and 16 points in 51 games uh, with the Whalers. Now, this was the Gordie Howe Whalers, and when he came in in 1980, Douglas put up some tremendous numbers. First NHL season, 33 goals, 57 points in 77 games. Now, uh, 80, uh, uh, 81, uh, excuse me, he did not he did not retire in 82, I apologize. It was the late 80s. Now, uh, in uh, 81, he had 13 goals in f- 55 contests. 82, he spent time between uh, Hartford and Binghamton, but Hartford had 17 points in 30 contests. 83, he found himself in Minnesota. 27 points in 68 games, and he had his first uh, uh, playoff uh, contest that year with five. Now, 84, he split with Minnesota and Winnipeg, seven goals in 31 games. Now, 85, a very bizarre season, two assists in seven games uh, with the Jets, but played most of the campaign with Sherbrooke Canadians when Montreal and Winnipeg shared a franchise, 23 goals and 21 assists in 44 contests. Now, he played in the Finnish League for two years with uh, Ilves, uh, 36 goals and 36 contests in 86, with uh, seven goals and five assists and 12 points in 31 contests uh, in 87. Again, the honored member of the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame. Now, the, uh, the idea about uh, jo- uh, Gordy, Jordy, excuse me, born January uh, 20 at 58. Uh, the left winger, again, uh, a very, very uh, big total that he, uh, he put together. Now, again, drafted by the Leafs in 78, he was scouted for, for quite some time, ladies and gentlemen. And Montreal was also looking to draft him as well. Now, uh, the big season in 1980, of course, was that iconic four-goal game against the eventual Stanley Cup champion, the Islanders, on February 3rd, 1980. Now, uh, he entered his initial career in 85 with 76 goals, 62 assists for a total of 138 points and 268 uh, uh, contests. Now, uh, he, he holds the uh, Carolina Hartford record, tied actually with most goals in one contest with that game against uh, the Islanders. Now, the original Hartford Whaler, again, his first initial game was also the first game in the history of the Hartford Carolina franchise. Now, the reason why he was so successful in that first season, he played in the big line with Dave Keon for Hartford for most of the campaign. Now, injuries really hurt his career. He missed the end of the 80 season, the entire 1980 playoffs with a dislocated, dislocated uh, collarbone. 
Now, he also missed the end of the 81 season where a hairline fracture in his left foot, an injury suffered during Hartford's February 18, 81 game versus Winnipeg. He also missed most of the 82 season where a separated left shoulder suffered in a contest against Edmonton and the injury required postseason surgery. Scored on first shot in his first game in Winnipeg, which uh, drew uh, a great fan base uh, when he was playing with the Jets. Now, Douglas was basically what you call a good second, third line center left wing. He could play anything, very good in the power play, very good uh, uh, two week game, and a very, very uh, competent shot. Now, again, played with Springfield EHL, Binghamton of EHL, Sherbrooke, and Tampere uh, Ilves in Finland. Now, he was drafted by New England, who had the rights to sign him in 78. Now, he did play 53 games for the Sherbrooke squad that win, went on to win the AHL playoff title, but was, well, was not with the team in the postseason. Now, uh, he also worked as a radio column commentator uh, for the IHL, the AHL, as part of the CBC Manitoba broadcast team for the, the Moose franchise. Now, when he signed his first pro contract in May 25th, 78, he eventually played on the big line, of course, with Gordy Howe in New England. Gordy was playing with a lot of young players in that campaign. Now, uh, very involved in the off-field charities. He also uh, took the field on Harford's uh, charity softball team, which raised thousands of dollars for uh, great causes in that region of the States. Now, he returned to Winnipeg after retirement and went to financial services business, working for the Courts Financial Group. He was also a coach in minor hockey in Winnipeg after retirement and a very, very well-respected and loved uh, player. Now, why Jordy didn't want to sign with Toronto? Well, Toronto was a very complicated place being run by Harold Ballard. But you you look uh, at the, the fifth round of that draft, and 78 was uh, not uh, too, too bad. Like that fifth round, you had uh, Francis Ketty was taking as well. Uh, but Jordy, I think the reason why he dropped, that Winnipeg was having uh, a big, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 excuse me, uh, Hartford and Toronto were having uh, a big uh, attitude towards 79, thinking maybe this was going to be the year that the WHA was going to join in. But it wasn't a bad draft for Toronto that year. They got Joel Quenville, Mark Curtin, and uh, Panin. Uh, so, I mean, uh, and Douglas, again, that's why I think he dropped so much in the draft because we figured uh, he figured he was going to go into the uh, WHA. But the Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame, you got to be pretty good to make it there because there, there is no uh, weak players. Now, just a little, little bit of background, Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame, uh, their inductions, uh, nominations are welcome from the public. Just a reminder, categories are player, builder, official, media, teams, grassroots, and legacy programs. Individuals and teams nominated that have a connection to the province of Manitoba must be, uh, can be eligible. A nomination form with guidelines is available at the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame uh, website for Manitoba, mbhockeyhalloffame.ca. Anyway, uh, Jordy, what a, I really enjoyed him playing on David Keon's line. He had, uh, he had played in Toronto. And the announcer said that's another player that Toronto let get away. But the nice uh, Whalers teams of 79 and 80, again, Davy Keon, Gordy Howe, uh, Bobby Hull, Pat Boutet. They had a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of top players. Hartford in 1980 is the closest you're going to get probably to a Buffalo Sabre type, type team with a mix of veterans and the young players. But Jordy Douglas, to me, a very, very underrated player. You can do anything you wanted. And ladies and gentlemen, um, if injuries wouldn't have really hampered his career, I could have seen him eventually in the back of Toronto or even Montreal. Reminds me a lot, kind of a kind of a, a better version uh, scorer, like a like a Guy Carbonell, not not as good in defensive, but kind of that you know that six feet, uh, two hundred pound forward that every uh, third or fourth line needs. And uh, you know, but the announcer for CBC said it best. The CBC French announcer when he hit thirty goals, he said he's he's the most He's the most unknown 30-goal scorer probably in NHL history. Probably a lot of people don't even know he scored 33 goals. But like I said, at Hartford, very he was dynamite in the road too. A much much better road player than at home. He liked playing in the you know the Boston uh, Montreal rinks, tremendous. So that's the story of the great Jordy Douglas, our ha- Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame member. If you liked what we're doing here with our tribute podcast, 
to Manitoba Hockey Hall of Fame members. Let us know when to like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.